What you know about rolling down in the deep when your brain goes numb? You can if you've ever spent any time in the American suburbs, you know they can be quite the unfriendly place. If you don't have access to a car, you're basically screwed. There's no bus or train service for miles. Don't even think about trying to walk or bike anywhere. But it doesn't have to be this way. If you're new to the channel, I'm Diana, and this is the City of Saltaire, a project inspired by Salt Lake City. In today's video, we're gonna build out a new suburban neighborhood called Jordan River. While the American suburbs can be an endless maze of single-family homes, big box stores, and impossible to find public transit, they can be better. Today, we are gonna build a neighborhood that is transitioning from a traditional low-density car-centric suburb to a more transit and bike-friendly mixed-density area. While it won't be paradise for those who crave walkability and good transit, it'll represent a vast improvement over the norm with higher density, newer buildings, bike and pedestrian paths, bus lanes, and a brand new metro station nearby, giving residents more options than just car-centric single-family housing. Although Saltaire is primarily based on Salt Lake City, for the Jordan River neighborhood, I'm taking inspiration from the area around the new Berryessa BART station in San Jose, which represents a suburb transitioning from a low-density car-focused past to a higher-density, transit-friendly future. I felt that using a coherent theme for the low-density homes in each subdivision would give it a feel that they were developed independently of each other, as if being built in sections by different developers over time, likely having been there before density and transit were introduced. This provides the neighborhood with some context, giving it some reason for existing beyond just, I wanted to put housing here, which helps with a sense of realism, as subdivisions are often developed in this manner, with a unified style of building in each neighborhood. I accomplished this by hand placing each home using the Find It and Ploppable Rico mods, which is my preferred method, as I find zoning results in incoherent, messy looking blocks that are just ugly and disgusting. Oh, Strip malls are such a common part of the suburban landscape that it's highly unlikely that they'd be redeveloped at this point in the neighborhood's transition to higher density. This Albertsons grocery store with a few other businesses is a classic example. Located across from the trailer park and with close access to the metro station and highway, it is a prime retail location. This proximity to transit made it ideal to add in some higher density apartment buildings nearby as they can easily walk to grab some groceries, liquor, pizza, or take a visit to the bank on their walk home from the metro or bus stop. This mix of suburban and urban forms is inevitable and will likely be the most realistic way to improve suburbs without displacing existing residents and businesses. Pedestrian and bike infrastructure are crucial to creating better suburbs. At the Berryessa station in San Jose is a flea market, which I believe predates the construction of the rail line. In Saltaire, I'm including a small market using Green City's commercial assets and combining it with pedestrian roads and some high density commercial and office buildings. This creates somewhat of a town center feeling, giving easy access to some shopping and jobs within the neighborhood, keeping commute times lower. If residents can reach everything they need within a 15 minute walk, it makes for a more vibrant community. I'm not gonna lie, I've been quite inspired watching the 15 minute city series by Joy Build Cities, and some of my inspiration from this area comes from her series. But before a suburb can walk, it has to crawl. So my goal is to show what those incremental in-between steps towards improvement and walkability look like. Along the Jordan River, the namesake of the neighborhood is a wonderful bikeway, which is somewhat broken up by a road in some portions, but I made sure to upgrade existing roads with bike lanes to ensure a bikeable connection directly to downtown. The main arterial road of the Jordan River neighborhood is called Mosiah Avenue. Formerly just empty land separating the arterial from disparate suburban subdivisions, it was a prime location for some higher density apartment buildings with dedicated bus lanes and direct service to the new Jordan River Metro Station. The assets I'm using are from various modern condo collections and are built in a style that is very common all over the United States, especially in areas developed in the past 10 years or so. These higher density buildings are intermixed with some more auto-oriented commercial uses, reflecting the area's past in which most of the major streets were functionally strodes. Hostile to all but automotive uses. Some of the apartments have nice little courtyards with paths, gazebos, and landscaping, creating livable, walkable spaces for residents to enjoy the outdoors. 
Jordan River is still a somewhat car-friendly suburb. Many of the buildings have ample parking. A fun trick I recently learned was to use the mid-century modern carports with the parking lot roads to create these neat little covered spaces that look super cool. The Zion City train lines tracks cut through part of the neighborhood behind the trailer park. Some older industry and warehouse uses are still present here surrounding the tracks. With easy access to the Mosiah bus line, the 1650 South tram line, and Jordan River Station, folks who work here have many options to commute. However, this dirty industry is likely to be a prime target for future redevelopment, given its location at the intersection of three major transit routes. But for now, it remains. The train here was a little uneven. Retaining walls and invisible terraforming networks help to cover it up and create a cool viaduct type feel for the train line. Walkable green space is super important in making a livable suburb. This formerly empty field was recently converted into a small artificial pond for neighbors to gather and kids to play. I built it by lowering it on a very light strength and then adding in a water source at 0.01 capacity, adjusting the water level appropriately, and then adding a cute little bridge, rocks, grasses, and creating a nice playground on one side. I'm sure this will be a wonderful amenity for the neighborhood. Across the street from the metro station on the riverbank is a sprawling office park suitable for commuters who drive or take transit. Most of the buildings are modeled off of those commonly found in Silicon Valley, which sort of matches the inspiration material for this neighborhood being based on San Jose, but also Salt Lake City has a lot of tech offices very similar to this, so it's a perfect match. Along the river is a nice pedestrian greenway that leads to the metro station for office workers to enjoy some nature on their break. I included the Park Life chessboard and plazas and promenades food truck plaza along the waterfront and added some basketball courts nearby for recreation. Having this employment center with wonderful amenities at the intersection of three major transit modes provides for a quite attractive place for locals to work. Built at the same time as, and in a similar architectural style to the nearby office buildings, Jordan River Metro Station was the catalyst for much of the new higher density developments in the neighborhood, enabling other methods of transit to be brought in, including two bus lines along Mosiah Avenue and the extension of the 1650 South tram line a few blocks to the south. Providing the area with access to multiple modes of high quality transit was a key part in making Jordan River more livable. Making the station itself required a lot of work with procedural objects, using props and pieces of various buildings that I found to create something totally unique to the neighborhood. I focused on every little detail of the station, from the ticket machines out front to the signage on the platforms. The plaza in front of the station is also loosely inspired by Berryessa Bart. This statue that came with the plazas and promenades pack was a perfect fit, and it looks quite a bit like the one out front of the real Berryessa station. It makes a perfect centerpiece for the entrance of the station. A fun trick that I've learned on these park life paths was to use node controller to drag all three ends together, creating that nice triangle design. In order to make the entrance to the station feel even more inviting, there's many beautiful bushes in red and white, matching the theme of the station itself, adding to the orderly feel of the area, giving it a real sense of purpose and place. Like Berryessa, Jordan River also has these cool red letters out front, letting people know which station they've arrived at. The station is fully functional in-game, and I made it work using this really cool trick that I did in this video, so click here to watch, and don't forget to subscribe for more episodes of Saltaire.